Hi guys, this is GSNO.com and I'm here with one of the most leaked foldables this year, the Motorola Razer 40 Ultra. Yes, they changed the naming pattern and included two figures. It's the Razer 40 now and it's a special year this year. It's uh, the anniversary of 50 years ever since the first mobile phone call was made using a Motorola handset. And here we are with the Razer 40 Ultra. There's actually an entire series of new Razer devices and they're going big this year. This is supposed to be a killer for the yet unlaunched Galaxy Z Flip 5. It's got a huge external screen, according to rumors, even bigger than the Z Flip 5. Okay, so the crease still exists down the middle. It's hard to say for me if it's uh, less visible than the predecessors, but let's say it's so. One thing is for sure, this is a long phone with a 6.9 inch screen. And this is an unboxing, so let's see what's inside the box. Okay, so first things first. We are greeted here with a special promise of manuals and plastic free and recyclable materials plus soy ink. Okay, so we're getting a two-part shell here, which I feel the need to check out. So this actually attaches to the body of the handset and protects it. It's more like a bumper case with a huge space for the external screen and this part here. So they fit on the device like this. You snap it here. Snap the other one here. Hopefully. And you should be about done. That's the case bundle with the handset. Uh, it's glossy and should protect, I would say, the corners and the sides more than anything else. It's uh, pretty easy to remove, unlike other cases. Now also in the box we have this section here, which includes the manuals. Readme and Juridic Info plus this metal key used to access the slots, as per usual, we're talking about nano SIM. we're not, I repeat, not talking about any sort of micro SD, nano memory, or other craziness, like the format that Sony tried at some point on its Cybershot cameras, phones, and PlayStation console or two. Remember the PS Vita? Right now we have the Project Q, but that's something else for another time. Okay, so we're trying to put everything back in here as we're approaching the end of the content inside the box. Hopefully I actually got this right. Now, uh, one thing is shocking for me here, the speed of the charger that we got here. I mean, it's just a 33 watt charger. I expect it's 68 for some reason. And it has a USB-A connector, which nowadays is strange because we mostly get to see uh, USB-C to USB-C. So USB-A to USB-C cable in the box. That's everything available here. I wasn't expecting any bells and whistles like the headphones. So here we go. This is the big external screen. It's 3.5 inches. The Galaxy Z Flip 5 is said to have 3.4 inches. So the cameras are cut right into the glass panel. And this is the main foldable 6.9 inch screen. But I think it's time to discuss the design a little bit more. It includes here a plastic protection for the screen, Gorilla Glass for the exterior part, stainless steel for the hinge, and also 7000 series aluminum on the sides. You can definitely see the crease now. And for such a long phone and for such a wide phone, I would say it's surprisingly comfy. My first impression was that it's actually slippery. It actually goes away after a few days. It has IP52 certification and it comes in beautiful colors like Glacier Blue, Infinity Black and especially Viva Magenta. I think we're pretty much done with the design. Remember the repellent coating and remember that it's only 189 grams in weight, which is actually quite few grams. Okay, so... It's time to discuss the screen and here we are dealing with a 6.9 inch plastic OLED foldable Full HD Plus with a huge refresh rate of 165Hz which feels a bit overkill if you ask me. Now the outer screen which you can use uh, on its own as shown here with its own widgets and apps. This one is a 3.5 incher. It's an AMOLED with a resolution which is pretty odd 1050 over 1066 pixels. So that's about it at first sight. I'll get back to it when we're covering the software. Now inside the phone, you'll we'll discover a familiar CPU, but not one from this year, one from the past year, Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1. It's not alone, it comes accompanied by 8 gigs of RAM, 256 gigabytes of storage. 
The battery is a 3800 mAh unit which charges at just 33 watts, at least it has a wireless charging. We also have stereo speakers, I see one here and I also see one here. The slit isn't facing me, it's facing the upper part or so it seems. Aside from that there is a side place fingerprint scanner which I keep pressing here and the slim, too slim uh, volume buttons above it. I've seen this trend before on Motorola's, they make too slim uh, volume buttons. On the connectivity front, the handset provides you with Bluetooth 5.3, Wi-Fi 6, NFC, USB-C, 3.1 and 5G. Now the cameras, I think it's time to discuss them, so camera wise we're dealing here with a front shooter which has the resolution of 32 megapixels and uh, then we get to the back side which should be a simple affair, we have the LED flash here and the two cameras, 12 megapixel f1.5 aperture optical emit stabilization and the sensor for the main camera is the same one from the Galaxy Z Flip 4, Z Flip 3 and the Xperia 5. The other camera is a 30 megapixel ultra wide one and uh, one thing I should mention here is that the front camera is capable of 4K capture which is a big plus. As far as the options are concerned we have here the more section with spot color, night vision, panorama, scan, dual capture, photo boot and the time lapse. There's a pro mode, there's a portrait mode, there's a photo mode and check it out. So right now I have selected this here. I can actually see a preview on the external screen. I can tap it and it's going to show some emotions which you can mimic to take more interesting shots. It's kind of cute or you can simply deactivate it and leave it blank. Aside from that there is this I would say flex mode which splits the screen in two. It's quite easy to take pictures if you're alone, traveling alone in another country and want to take a shot by putting this on a wall or something, a monument and seeing yourself as a timer keeps going on and on. Okay, video is also here. This is the resolution and I was actually shocked to see that we get a special type of stabilization, the regular kind and also the horizon lock. Basically you can even rotate the phone, the horizon stays fixed. Plus there's the slow motion. I think we've pretty much covered the cameras and we can discuss the software now. It's obviously Android 13 with some tweaks from Motorola on top of it. Usually they're all centered in the MyOX app. This is the customization area for your themes, fonts, icon shapes, colors, display, layout, peak display, sounds, dark mode and external display. I'm using gestures right now to navigate but there's more of them here. You can definitely see them all. And then we have the Moto Secure which I actually love. There's a pin pad scramble which messes up your figures for the pin so there won't be the typical order 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Network protection and a secure folder. Some tips, some display features and of course the fun area. These are the gaming features which we have here. And also we have the video call effects and Dolby Atmos with a bunch of tweaks and a dedicated app in case you don't want to go here. You have the dedicated app and the dedicated tweaks which you can rely on from here. You can customize your frequencies and your genres and surround virtualizer and all that. Okay, I'm actually intrigued by this game Astro Odyssey. As far as I know, I think, I just think, you could be able to play it on the external screen. Hopefully. No? Still exploring that. Uh, I was actually sent this phone for unboxing without a specs list, so I'm discovering it uh, as time goes by. Okay, so software-wise, I forgot something. We've done with the... Okay, let's quit this. We're done with the... My Wex, but we're not done with the productivity. We have Ready4, you can connect to a PC or tablet and share your connection with it or transfer files. You can connect to a TV or display via Miracast and do these things. You can um, use a desktop mode, you can mirror a game, mirror a movie, do a video call or things like that. So yeah, there you have it. And now finally we can address the external screen, which is the core of the experience I feel. Um, this diagonal here actually reminds me of the first generations of iPhones, that's the diagonals we were playing with. So, first of all, we have a bunch of home screens to go between. One of them can be the calendar plus weather, one can be the main one, here we have the apps, and here we have uh, once again the calendar but without the weather. Here we can go straight to the settings, rather the quick settings, and here we can go straight to the battery, which is a useful shortcut. Swipe down, you're going to see the quick settings. And uh, you should also be able to swipe from the side at some point to see other extras. And check it out, we also have extra icons here to help navigate between these features. If you press here, you go into the apps. If you press here, you go to the calendar. And if you press here, 
go to the weather. So yeah, you can skip ahead if you want to. Okay, so aside from that, there are settings for this screen. And aside from settings, I actually want to show you that you can use full apps on this panel, which is something that the other device makers don't have, of course, camera. Obviously, you can take selfies using the main camera. It is a calculator, that's how it looks. There's a recorder, there's the maps, messages, and Gmail. That's what maps looks like on this panel. Okay, so save. You can explore the area, you can also see YouTube and a few other apps. And what I was about to show you is the fact that there are special dedicated settings for the external display and you can find them here. You can tweak lock screen clock faces which are just beautiful. Wallpapers, also beautiful. Okay, panels. You can have the agenda, apps, contacts, Google Feed, Google News and the weather. Actually, let's activate Google News. Uh, display and font size can be tweaked. App behavior, permission and settings. You can actually display these apps on the external screen. These are the live preview apps. And there's actually more of them than you expect, including YouTube and Facebook and Chrome. And finally, call settings. That's pretty much all you can do with the external screen. Uh, there are a few features here. There's actually quite a few of them. So yeah, pretty impressed by it so far. I'm actually also loving this new wallpaper and I look forward to see what Samsung can do to rival the Motorola Razr Fold Ultra. I've actually used the camera already and I can tell you I'm pretty impressed uh, not just by itself but rather by the evolution from the previous Razrs. That's it from us right now. It's more easy to handle than you'd expect. You're going to come to love this external screen and the camera has evolved quite a bit, especially from the first two Razrs. That's it from us. Goodbye.